get me wrong, I like this production. It was fun seeing the Greek warriors as American GIs and Trojans decked out as Iraqi soldiers. And I thrilled to the thundering shock and awe that only today's modern armies can muster. Compared with that, the sound of clashing steel doesn't cut it. And if director Robert Melrose set this play in Baghdad following the U.S. invasion, to make the point of relevance, I get his point. Shakespeare's cynical take on war is never out of date. But this finely crafted play brimming with broad stroke characters and humor and caricatured heroes of history has no need for such a setting shift, particularly one that presented few political or practical parallels. In fact, at times I found it distracting to hear the warriors wielding M16s sticking to the scriptural references of swordplay. And though I couldn't help smiling when the incidental music featured Tom Jones singing It's Not Unusual, I couldn't see the sense. Those distractions do a disservice to an otherwise well-paced and solid piece of work, dubbed Shakespeare's Epic by Melrose, and scaled well to the intimacy of the new theater. The story takes place in the seventh year of the decade-long conflict sparked by the Trojan Paris' theft of Helen from the Greeks. The war is cool, the combatants are bored, and that's a point well made and humorously, uh, though perhaps incessantly, by the director. Beginning even before the curtain rises, the GIs occupy their time driving golf balls, scuffling, playing craps, and in the case of Achilles and his boyfriend, Patroclus, lounging around. You may even imagine them in the tent watching soap operas. This seems to be more fun on the Trojan side of the wall, where Troilus, son of King Priam, played with boyish delight by Rathi Barsumium, feverishly caught the hard-to-get courts, the hard-to-get Cressida, portrayed with, in, portrayed with intelligence and wit by Tala Ash. Meanwhile, as surrogates for the stalemated city-states, Troy's valiant Hector challenges the Greeks' best Achilles to a one-on-one -on -one affair. Though the context is historical, the text focuses on the personal and on the quirky personalities of our multiple heroes, and there is perhaps surprisingly much fun to be had. In fact, while the play could hardly be characterized as comedy, the violence precludes that. The clowns have the juiciest roles. As Cress and his uncle, obsessed with playing Cupid and pairing her off with Troilus, for a reason that's never made clear, Barzan Akhavan is as brilliant as he is effectively creepy. The true clown role here is that of Thersides, identified in the dramatist Persani as a, quote, deformed and scurrilous Grecian. Michael Elitch's explosive whirling dervish of a performance is as broadly comedic as it is nuanced. I'd see it again just for him. See Troilus and Cressida through November 4th. I give it four out of five rosies.